What's up, people? Welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing good. This is Gufran, and you're watching Indian Grad in Germany. So, the people who don't know me, I'm a management student who recently graduated from Technical University of Munich. I studied masters in management, but I make videos related to Germany, different courses in Germany, and I invite people who are studying those specific courses. So, in today's video, I have with me Pravin. He studied and he is still studying in University of Siegen. Uh, mechatronics, masters in mechatronics. Uh, this is quite interesting because the industry now I am working in is also quite related to the course he is studying. And mechatronics as a field is quite vast. And also this program is interesting in terms of Germany. So let's see what his opinion is related to this course. What are mm -hmm. the opportunities after the course? And let's start with the video. So Praveen, thanks for coming on the podcast session. And we'll start with your introduction first. Thank you, Gufran, for having me here. So I am Praveen Natkarni from Bangalore, India. I finished my bachelor's in mechanical engineering from Bangalore. And then I did a certification course in industrial automation. And then I am here in Germany for my master's in mechatronics from University at Siegen in the state of North Rhine-Westfalen in Germany. Yeah. Yeah. That, that that was crisp and clear. Thanks for the introduction, Praveen. Uh, regarding this this university and the course, how did you came up to know about this course? Like, did you saw on, on specific platforms or were your friends studying in this specific course? What was the journey about? Yeah. Where my lookout for master started uh, at the end of bachelor's where I was looking for something interdisciplinary and I thought mechatronics was the obvious choice. Mm -hmm. So when I scouted through DAD and other websites online, I uh, shortlisted courses with respect to mechatronics and production systems and its applications. And mm -hmm. then yes, mechatronics has been popular with a few universities in Germany and Siegen is one of them. Okay. And coming towards the course mechatronics, so uh, does the course have modules from mechanical engineering and electronics or how is it like how's the course structure in terms of the course duration and so on? Well, mechatronics in Siegen is a four semester course and mostly it is uh, from students from mechanical engineering and electrical and electronics engineering come here. Mm -hmm. The course is jointly offered by Department of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering, okay. jointly again with mechanical engineering. So uh -huh. there is a host of courses. And if I want to divide into three buckets, first would be mechanical engineering. We have certain courses like machine dynamics, machine mm -hmm. design, control engineering and automation. The second part would be more of electronics, like embedded systems, power electronics, electrical engineering. And the final part is about more on computer science, on AI programming, like C++, Python, software engineering, and also deep learning applications of computer vision. So broadly, it's into three buckets like this. Okay, so th that means the first three semesters will be covered in all these subjects, right? You're right. Usually the first three semesters are dedicated for courses and the fourth semester is for thesis. But as for what I have seen, the average complete, completion duration of students is about three years because they right. tend to do many projects in between and also internships. Yeah. And also to add up this point uh, in the conversation in Germany, you can always extend your courses in specific universities. Uh, but it is possible, like unlike India, where we have to do the specific courses in the specific duration. Here you have the flexibility that you can always extend your course. Uh, coming to the point of master thesis, is it mandatory that you have to do the thesis in university or maybe outside or it's up to you? It's up to us, like some pr would prefer to do it in the university because they have previously done a small project within the university. Mm -hmm. Some would also prefer to continue their internship topics and work student topics in the industry and also gain industry experience. So many also opt for industry thesis. Of course, mm -hmm. there is a challenge to find a professor who accepts uh, industry thesis. But yeah, most of them are manageable. Okay. And uh, now coming towards the course requirements. So I believe we have covered most of the questions or most of the points related to the course, like what the course about, how, how is the course duration, or we can extend the course or not. Uh, how were you selected for this course? <laughs> if you can guide us. <laughs> well, I, I, will, I will give you a context. So as for what I have seen the numbers, roughly about 4,000 people apply to this course and about 120 of them usually get into this every year. And okay. this also depends 
like some years it's like in between 60 to 90 students per semester in the winter semester mm -hmm. and sometimes it is about 120 to 150 students so primarily as i said students are having electrical or mechanical background and some mm -hmm. are of course from mechatronics bachelors which is not so very common in india yeah so coming here again about one if i consider 120 students more than 80 percent are indians in the course because it is international course uh -huh. and of course we can see germans when some uh, modules are common to other courses as well yeah. other students include from bangladesh turkey azerbaijan iran egypt and others okay uh, so the major background mm -hmm. of a student would be uh, of course above average grades in mm -hmm. bachelors Roughly, they take about a pre-check in the course, like before you apply or start the process. Okay. Your GPA and the IELTS score is a criteria for pre-check. Mm -hmm. And they tell you if you clear the pre-check or not. Okay. So if you clear the pre-check, then you send in the documents. Mm -hmm. And then they go through your qualifications, certifications, and experience that you have. Okay. And then grant admission. For, for pre-check, uh, as you said, above average grades, that is quite generic. But still now... You are studying in this course. You you know your batchmates well. So what is the above average mark? Like sixty percent, seventy percent? What what it is? Well, I would say it is like dependent on the university they graduate on. Like people from NITs have a lower cutoff. People from other private institute it depends. But roughly, I would say anything over nine GPA is mm -hmm. pretty good but i have often <laughs> seen as well that people with over nine also didn't clear the pre-check but uh -huh. often it depends on the particular semester of how the input is like if there are a lot of people then they raise the cutoff but okay. anything around 8.5 to 9 and above is good i feel and also regarding the ielts six is the mandatory criteria mm -hmm. average and then uh, roughly yeah. i see about 6.5 to 7 is where majorly lie in terms of work experience is it mandatory that a student should have minimum work experience no our course doesn't require uh, prior work experience but yes like it is always advantageous to have some experience in mechanical sector or people also come from programming background where they were into software development and others but it is not a primary criteria okay also i want to ask you about the fee structure is it a paid course is it free or how it is so university at zegan is a publicly funded course and there is no additional fee apart from the semester ticket so the semester fee is about 326 euros for winter semester 2023 2024 mm -hmm. this also includes the travel or the transportation ticket for the whole state of nrw oh. in other cities it is only uh, specific to a city like if you're in munich you get the yeah. city ticket only for munich but in the nrw it is for the entire state so if you pay 326 euros you get your university's fee covered and also the transportation which is quite amazing that's nice because in munich we have to buy additional semester ticket now it's mm -hmm. a deutschland ticket but previously we used to buy additional semester ticket and then we also have to pay the semester con contribution but yeah this mm -hmm. is quite different in nrw you get these additional benefits then <laughs> on top of it yeah and uh now coming towards the course opportunities like once you are graduated from this course where all i mean in which industries you can work uh in which sector in which specific domain in the industry you can work well few people opt for phds in the universities different universities across germany and also research institutes like fraunhofer mm -hmm. but majorly venture out to companies in the fields of applications of artificial intelligence in manufacturing in embedded systems in automated driving and some also go into software development testing and project management so mm -hmm. the alumni currently are working with also major firms like volkswagen daimler mm -hmm. and also void dure and also few joint startups mm -hmm. and some local companies around uh, zegan like it is quite prominent there so they get direct access due to their prior experience with master thesis or working students or so so it's converted okay in terms of opportunities in the city in zegan how good it is like we we are talking opportunities in terms of the holistic bracket part-time jobs they can be odd jobs and also uh, the jobs in company working students or internships so let me give you a 
idea of Zigan. Zigan is a small city in the state of NRW. The closest big cities are Cologne in the state of NRW and Frankfurt in the state of Hesse. Coming to the working opportunities, of course, within universities, there are jobs as student and research assistants. And also there are uh, few jobs that you could take up on a contract basis at few companies around. Uh -huh. And also now possibilities of remote work in terms of working students or internships from any company across Germany. Adding to this also, there are some other uh, part-time jobs that are available, uh -huh. be it in the food sector like cooking, service, cleaning, bartendering. So these are also an opportunities that are there. And also recently there is a uh, Amazon set of a facility that has come up where uh -huh. you are available for shifts and uh, for sorting the goods so yeah then uh, in terms of uh, the full time opportunities does the university help you get a job well there is a job center which would help in drafting cover letters or taking some counseling from them but as for what i have seen majorly they find themselves and through job portals online but there is no dedicated like placements like what we see in india which is mm -hmm. not so common here but yes there is a job center which would facilitate and also they have some few workshops or so during the semester to help students prepare for post studies okay and they they can also help you in drafting your cv your cover letter or maybe screening your cv and cover letter right you're right they always review give feedback and also suggest what to do what not to do common pitfalls and others uh Praveen, can you also let me know about the german skills required for this course or not not just for this course but nrw as a region in munich it's pretty much convenient if you don't have good german skills you can still survive how about nrw well, University at Siegen doesn't require German course mm -hmm. or like prior German language for its admission, but I would de definitely recommend anyone applying to Siegen to gain at least basic German so that it is better to interact at supermarkets or with locals and then when you come to the university, we have to do one level that is mandatory in order to graduate. So. Okay. In uni, you can do it, or you can learn German from VHS or other institutes locally. Okay, and in university, uh, are there courses offered for free for German language? Of course, throughout your stay, you can enroll for different levels of German, which is absolutely free of cost. So, yes, we have a language center dedicated for that. Okay, got it. Uh, final point for today's discussion. Uh, what is your opinion or feedback for this course, uh, Masters in Mechatronics at University of Siegen? What are the pros and cons after studying this course? And Or maybe a general feedback you can give to the students. So mechatronics, as you know, is a diverse field. So it is very important to choose which specialization that you would like to take up after your job, after your studies. So you need to gain the industry relevant skill set from the very beginning. So I have seen few people change their domains like after one and a half, two years and take additional time. So I would prefer that any student coming to Zegan explore as early as possible and choose their field of interest and mm -hmm. then get the relevant uh, skill set but currently the course is more focused on application of ai in different sectors and there is a change of curriculum from winter semester 2023 and i think it is more prepared for industry relevant skill set in-house so students need not do it outside Okay, yeah, I'll add then the link in the description so that students can check the new curriculum and course requirements. That's that's yeah. nice to hear. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, one point I, I have to add up uh, to this, uh, to Praveen, is in terms of Zegan, uh, how about full-time opportunities? Are there big companies situated in Zegan if students want to work full-time or they have to move out of the city? Well, Zegan and NRW in specific houses a large number of local companies or the medium-sized industries in Germany, which are also global leaders. But they often require German, like which are very demanding in German. But yes, we find, of course, few international companies focusing on English language. And yeah, I have experience or inputs from a few of my seniors and peers who have got into both mm -hmm. of these companies but it is not as wide opportunities as like yep. in stuttgart unique or cologne 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's always competitive as well. If you want to find opportunities in English, but it's, it's not impossible as you said. So you always have opportunities coming up. Yeah. There is also a dedicated page called career Sud West Fallen, mm -hmm. which is like a localized job uh, sharing network, just like LinkedIn, but for our region. So there we have local postings that are there, which are commonly not available on crossing or like LinkedIn. Oh, this is quite interesting. Yeah, I, and I never knew about this this website. So for mm -hmm. the audience, uh, this is another input uh, which you can take. And thanks then, Praveen. <laughs> I think we have covered entirely all the points regarding this course. Maybe if there are some points that we have left, we, we, we can cover them through the comments when whenever yeah. the students ask the comments. So thanks a lot uh, for coming on this podcast session, sharing your opinion and uh, genuine feedback, I would say. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Gufran, for having me. One last point I would like to add is the cost of living that is for Zegan is around 500 to 600 euros per month, mm -hmm. which includes accommodation of around 300 euros and then about mandatory insurance of 120 euros. Yep. And then about, it all depends on your food and how often you party. So 500 yep. to 600 euros is a good amount for cities. Yeah, this, this point is also very important that Praveen has added up. Uh, cost of living. So he has given you a rough idea of what it looks like for Zegan. And this is comparatively quite less when we compare to other cities. So you can also consider this point when you apply for this university. It will save your money. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Thanks then, Praveen. Thank you. Thank you, Gufran.